Kia ora, I'm Erin J Doyle, welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag and also struggling not to cough in the middle of my sentences. If I do horribly cough and fail to edit it out, my apologies, I am rife with disease of the non-terrifying global plague persuasion. Um, I will have a list of the questions for this tag down in the description as well as a link to the original creator's video so if you want to go check that out you can and if you want to do this video yourself do leave a comment below to let me know so I can go check out your video and leave it likes and help the algorithm realise that you're awesome and that kind of thing. So without further ado onto the questions for which I'm going to try not to repeat books because I realise that I could like answer about half of these with one book because I've had a couple of really really great reads this year so I'm going to try and mix it up a little bit. Okay, blah blah has been achieved. On to the questions. Number one, the best book you have read so far this year. For me that is Kuranya Etuku, my apologies if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I think I might be but I, there's like the eye throws me. Anyway, um, this has uh, won this year's Acorn Fiction Prize, which is New Zealand's biggest literary award, and it was very, very well deserved. It is a reimagining of a Māori legend about... Um, uh, the original legend is about Hatupatu, who is captured by this um, sort of terrifying bird woman monster, and the legend is about him escaping from her. This book is from her perspective and um, it's amazing. I have gushed about it in previous videos but basically um, it's not only from her perspective, it is giving time to other uh, women from Māori legends and allowing them to speak and um, giving a little bit of a feminist opinion or insight to some of these legends in which the female characters often suffered. It's um, beautifully written, the content is interesting, like just the story is interesting, and it is also a really interesting object in that you can read it from this direction, or this direction, and it's like a, you can't even tell when you pick up the book which is the intended beginning. Like you actually just have to make a choice and go with it. Um, and the idea is that halfway through the book you have to flip it and read from the other direction and it works no matter which way you go with. So it's just an unusual way of writing a book and I can just appreciate so many sort of different aspects of how it's been written. Um, as well as the actual story itself. So I really highly recommend. Um, there is a little bit of Te Māori in it, um, but I don't think it's enough to make it a difficult read. I think I only had to um, quickly Google a few words when I first started reading it, but it's sort of um, provided with enough context that you can kind of figure it out. However, that being said, it is a language that, whilst I don't speak it, I have been hearing it my entire life so perhaps my vocabulary in it isn't completely zero so it might be slightly more challenging for a non-New Zealander to pick this book up and just start reading it um, but I don't think the use of Māori has been um, too heavy-handed for you to pick it up. Is there anything I want to say? I'm just going to move on. Question 2. What is the best sequel you have read so far this year? I have more than one book for this, but the one I'm going to pick is Heartstopper. Um, I just, I love these books so much, and yeah, I thought the way that they took the ideas or the events from the first book and carried it through into this book was really, really good. I just, I can't gush enough, so I'm just going to try and keep this minimal, because I'm pretty sure I have gushed about this in another video extraordinarily recently. Um, yeah, it's just very sweet and very thoughtfully done and beautiful and all the good things. This series in general leaves me like a giggling happy mess, so that had to be 
at least one of my picks for the best sequel for the year. Question three, what is a new release you haven't read yet but want to? I'm going to go with The Witchfinder's Mark by Paul M. Clark. This was released on the 7th of June, so it's probably one of the two most recent releases on my shelves. Um, if you saw my haul video, you'll know why I want to get onto this one. Um, this top won't sit where I want it to. And I think that's because I want it to sit where it's not designed to. But like, it looks nicer off the shoulder than up here, because up here it's all like loose and it'll fitted looking. But that's where it wants to sit. And I want it, I want it off the shoulder so that this is a little bit firmer and like doesn't look ill-fitted. Right, question four. What is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year? I don't have one. All the books that I've been waiting for came out already. I don't even know what's due to come out. It's not something that I even keep an eye on really unless there's a book that I'm like really like chomping at the bit for and like I said the ones that I had been waiting for are in my hands so there is a nothing for that one. Um, there is a nothing for that one. Ah, oh, good English. Excellent. Moving on. Number five. My biggest disappointment for the year. This one's really hard to answer because I actually have several disappointments, some of which I DNF'd. But the ones which I DNF'd were books which I wasn't like super hyped up for. They were new to me authors, so I wasn't going in like, oh my god, I finally get to read the thing. I wasn't going in expecting certain things. So maybe it's not that they disappointed me so much as they failed to impress. So I think I'm going to keep my disappointment considerations for books which I had expectations for going into it. Sorry if you can hear the beeping. Um, so this leaves me with two books that I found disappointing and I think I'm going to have to go with Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone by Diana Gabaldon. This is the ninth book in the Outlander series. There are actually more than nine books in her world in general, but this is like the main series focused on Jamie and Claire, who are the male and female protagonists of, from the beginning of the series. The other stories are like about their friends and the wider circle of characters. My voice is really dying, I'm sorry, hang on. We're going to have to lozenge this situation. The reason I found this disappointing was that I've started to notice some repeated ideas or themes and it's just starting to get a little bit too repetitive. This series has time travel and Yes, I can understand. If you are a person who is affected by some historical event, like your people have been invaded and conquered by the British, and you discover that you can travel back in time, of course you might have some motivation to go back in time and try to prevent that event. However, that has now happened four times. The main character tried to prevent the um, slaughter at Culloden during the Scottish Uprising. She met another time traveller who was also trying to change events to do with that uprising. In a later book they discovered there had been a time traveller who went back to try and help the Native Americans um, come out better with um, the arrival of the English. And now in this book there is another time traveller who's gone back in time to try and change the outcome of the American Revolution in an attempt to uh, prevent slavery continuing on for as long as it did. He thinks that um, if the British win then the slaves will uh, be freed sooner and there'll be many lives saved etc. So it's like, okay, good motivator, great, but again like I just 
it feels like even though it's an obvious is it an obvious idea even though it's a good idea I should say it's a good idea but I feel like I've read it now and I just why am I reading the same idea again so that was a disappointment I felt like um, the B imagery was too heavy-handed. Um, the main character has kept bees for years. She has had beehives in previous books. In this book, she's given bees to kind of restart the beehive keeping situation. And this is the first time that um, some of the traditional um, law customs around beekeeping come up most specifically going and updating the bees so you would go and sit next to the hive and tell them about um, events going on and if somebody died you had to go and tell them so it was weird that this was the first time any kind of chatting to the bees thing came up because she's already had bees and not only was it the first time it came up it was a major thing that kept happening, like multiple characters went and chatted to the bees. It was the title of the book and it was quite heavy handed foreshadowing for a potential death. There was other material that was kind of repeated. In a previous book they have, um, because of time travelling and blah blah, in a previous book they found out that they were likely to die and then they didn't! Hooray! In this book they find out that a certain character is likely to die and he doesn't! Hooray! Again. There's also an again with a character who in a previous book becomes infatuated with the same woman that his cousin is infatuated with and in the beginning of this book, he is still obsessing over her and being annoyed that she chose his cousin over him. Okay, fine. Then, he meets his other cousin's widow. At the time, he knows his cousin probably isn't dead. Does that stop him deciding to become obsessed with her? Of course it doesn't. What the fuck? Like, what are the chances that one person would randomly and innocently become obsessed with his cousin's wives twice? Like, I think I screwed up my plurals in that sentence, but you understand, I hope. So, yeah, I just, I feel like certain things were too heavy handed. I felt like ideas are being recycled, and I feel like. This could have been perhaps the time to wrap things up if we've got to the point where we're getting repeaty. Um, there's clearly going to be another book, possibly two. Maybe the spark's just gone for me. I did start reading these when I was in high school, so maybe I've just outgrown them. I think that's worth considering. Um, but I also think that my gripes are legitimate. What the hell have I bookmarked? Number six, my biggest surprise for the year, was Greta and Velden. This is like just a contemporary, um, I don't know, just two young people being young people, I guess. This is about basically the love lives of Greta and Velden, who are siblings. Um, Velden has OCD and for a moment there I was like, wait, is it Greta? No, it's definitely Velden. Has OCD. And that is discussed in a really interesting and insightful and, to me, informative way in the beginning. So I thought that was really good. Um, and it actually works out really well in that later on there is a younger family member who starts um, having the same kind of thoughts and experiences. And there's like a opportunity for him to kind of help. And there's another young person um, who, again, because of his OCD, he's able to step in and help this young person and create connections. So it's sort of, um, you know, it's just part of who he is, but it 
has like a nice wholesome functional application later on which I found quite pleasing. Um, this book is basically just about their love lives and it all ends very happily ever after and is extraordinarily gay and the last half just filled me with a lot of giggly happinesses. I did find it quite slow to get into, that might have just been because I went into it with no expectations and it's not a book that I would pick up like the the blurb in this didn't seem encouraging or inspiring to me um, but yeah it was really really great and that's why it's going to be my biggest surprise is because I did not anticipate even liking it let alone having it be one of my favourite reads for the year. Number seven, favourite new author, either a debut or a new to you. I, in an effort not to repeat titles already mentioned, am going to go with CJ Scruse. My apologies if that's incorrect, it could well be. Uh, she wrote Sweet Pea, which I really enjoyed. It is about a female serial killer. Number eight, newest fictional crush. No, I don't do that. Moving on. Number nine, newest favourite character. I don't like picking favourites. But, being forced to for the sake of the internet, I'm going to break the rule and repeat Heartstopper. Um, Nick in Heartstopper is probably a favourite. He's just a good kid. Uh, number 10. A book that made you cry. So far, none of them. I don't think I've read anything that's been a tearjerker this year. Question 11. What book made you happy? I'm going to go with Fire. This... It's just an adventure. It is a fantasy adventure. There's nothing like... specific that I can say is like why it made me happy. It's not like it was all oh, the, the happy ending or oh it was the relationship. I think what I enjoyed about this book was that it was the first just out and out fantasy adventure I had read in a while and it was like a, a returning to my comfortable happy space after spending too long in the like literary realm. I think when it comes to just plain enjoyment and happiness in reading, fantasy is my happy place and this book brought me back to it. That being said, still an excellent book, highly recommend. Um, you know, strong female protagonist with interesting challenges to overcome, who takes full control and mastery of her own body, and yeah, tells a boy who sucks to piss off. Um, it did kind of creep me out that the two lovers she has in the book both use the same pet name for her. But other than that, it was excellent. And yeah, lots of happinesses. Well, people are being murdered. <coughs> right, number 12, the most beautiful book I have bought this year. This is going to be the Hoya short story collection. I mean, just look at it. I mean, you know, obviously beauty here is being defined by pastel and pretty, but I still just think it's just such a pretty cover. And finally, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I'm going to go with the final books for the Hell's Library, starting with the Archive of the Forgotten. I really, really enjoyed The Library of the Unwritten, the first book in the trilogy, and I cannot wait to jump into these. They're also quite thin, so I suspect I will easily be able to achieve the goal of reading both of them sooner rather than later. That's it! I've been filming for god knows how long. You're probably going to see like an eighth of the actual footage, just because of the amount of coughing that has been involved. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment down below if you are going to make this video yourself so I can go and check out your version of it. I'll see you next time. Bye!